Well, hello there. I'm so excited that you are here to join me for the Terry Cole Show. Um, today I'm doing something a little different because you guys asked me to, so here we are. I'm going to be doing a Q&A. So I chose a bunch of questions that came in, well, my team did, and I'm going to be answering them. So if you don't know me, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, the author of Boundary Boss and the Boundary Boss Workbook, and my brand new book called Too Much, which is out October 15th, pre-order at hfcbook.com right now. HFC, you get it for high functioning codependency because that is what the book is about. The book is called Too Much. The subtitle is A Guide to Breaking the Cycle of High Functioning Codependency. That is what we're doing. So uh, before we get into it, if you happen to be new here on my YouTube channel, please introduce yourself in the comments. Please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I roll out something brand new, which is every Tuesday and every Thursday. And since I make it for you, I really wouldn't want you to miss it, right? I'm really passionate about making mental health resources more accessible to everyone, sort of evening the playing field just a little bit. So by subscribing to my channel, you can help me reach more people who need the content right? The more people that subscribe, the more people that subscribe. So it doesn't cost you any money to subscribe. So please do, because it does help me. A larger subscriber base helps the YouTube algorithm, right, that to recommend my videos to others, spreading awareness, spreading support, spreading possibility. So your subscription to this channel actually makes a difference because this is how YouTube does it. And I really want to reach as many people as possible to help them really lessen their own suffering and elevate their own joy, as I like to say. But that is the truth. All right. So I'm going to start with questions. And these are questions that my team has gathered from people sending them to us on Instagram, on YouTube, and all the places. So, hey, Terry, have you done anything or thought about doing something about how to be soft and feminine while still holding boundaries, specifically with family, spouse, etc.? As a recovering people pleaser who never knew how to set boundaries, it's still really challenging. In addition, I'm having trouble figuring out the balance between soft but not getting manipulated, particularly by a narcissist, if any of that makes sense. So, like the masculine and feminine balance while setting and holding boundaries. Yes. First of all, if you are dealing with a narcissist who is manipulating you, I wouldn't necessarily worry about being soft. I would worry about being strong because that is what's going to be required of you if you are going to hold your boundaries with a narcissist because they are very clever and manipulative. So the real question is, how can you set them in a way so that you can be heard? So I think that the um, myth about having boundaries means you have to be hard is not true. And I do think that that impacts like what we think about it. So I want you to recognize within yourself, what are the limit, limiting beliefs you have about being a boundary boss? Do you feel like you have to be to do it? Do you feel like you have to be verbally punching people in the face? Is it all about no, no, no in your mind, right? Because of course, it's not that, it doesn't have to be that. And we can always set boundaries with love and kindness if that's what we want to do, right? It's all about your tone of voice and your language and, and, and what you say. We can always say, hey, I'd like to make a simple request. We can start a boundary conversation with something positive if it's someone that you love and that you don't want to offend, right? And, and if, if it's true, I don't, I don't mean make up something to like stroke someone, someone's ego. I mean, for real, like if it is actually true for you, you can start by saying, I love the time that we spend together, and I'd like to make a simple request that you text me to see if it's a good time for me before you just stop over my house, right? So there's a way that we can do it from a place of love and still stand firm in our boundaries. But from your question, I get the vibe that you're afraid to set boundaries, which I understand, because you're a recovering people pleaser, so that makes sense. But there's also a limiting belief that I hear in there that 
so setting boundaries is going to mean that you're mean. I really want you to look at that because it's not true. It's really the most loving thing that you can do for yourself and for your relationships. Because when we don't set the boundaries, what happens? The people in our lives don't really know us, right? If you're saying yes when you want to say no, if you're harboring resentment, that is between you in your relationships as well. So even though learning to set boundaries is uncomfortable, and I appreciate your question, and obviously you're doing it, at least it's discomfort that will end. It's discomfort that leads to a new normal that's better for you. When we don't do it, and we're just feeling bitter about it, that's discomfort that never ends. That we just, It just goes on and on and on until the end of our lives if we never learn the language of healthy boundaries, you know? And you guys can certainly do that. I wrote a whole friggin' book about it, and I also talk about it in Too Much, my new book, which you can pre-order at hfcbook.com. But the old book, the first book, is called Boundary Boss, where I really do just walk you through the entire thing that you need to know about how to do it. So thank you for that question. I appreciate you. All right. So this is about high-functioning codependency. When a partner or family member is doing something you can tell is going to create chaos and impact you down the line, and you know that you can do it better to ward off issues, how to not jump in and handle it to avoid the disruption to your own life you can see coming. Well, I think that you got to think about, you're talking about a disruption to your own life, but my question is, are you trying to impact and manage other people's outcomes. And because you're a high-functioning codependent, you're unclear about what is your side of the street and what is the other person's side of the street. Could that be what's happening? Because every person in our life, just as we, have a right to be sovereign. Every person has a right to be sovereign. And I think that even if what they're doing isn't what you think they should be doing, if they're grown, Adults, they have a right to do it, you know? And yes, sometimes it does impact us, but still. And and we can say our concerns about that. But I don't think that the jumping in to handle it is the way to go. I think that having a conversation about it is the way to go. I think that potentially offering help is the way to go. Or just voicing your concerns is the way to go. But the whole thing about the jumping in when you know that you can handle it, you know you can do it better, is what you're saying, which is basically the HFC mantra of like, it's just easier to do it myself. Nobody's going to do it as good as I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it myself. But that leads to these out-of-balance relationships where you have all of this over-functioning and under-functioning, which is not good. And somebody ends up, both people usually, end up really resentful. The person who feels like they're being controlled is resentful, resentful, and the person who feels like they're over-functioning their ass off is also resentful because you feel like, well, if you knew how to do it, I wouldn't have to do it, but you don't have to do it. So I say instead of jumping in, even if you can, doesn't mean you should, have a conversation first. That's my answer to you. Thank you so much. And also, obviously, go get my book. Just go to hfcbook.com. Because the whole thing is about that, and I have all these bonuses that we are giving. So go, 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 and pre-order your book now, and join all the fun. We've got tons of festivities happening around this book. I'm so incredibly excited. Um, Okay, and this is also about high-functioning codependency, is how to differentiate between being high-functioning codependent and just wanting to do something nice or handle something for someone with a lot on their plate without taking over. Is it overcorrecting if I'm stepping away from it all? Sometimes the let them struggle and handle it themselves feels like I'm unsupportive and uncaring, and it's hard not to jump in and fix since I am capable and could do it easily. So the, interesting, this is very similar in a way, different but similar to the last one. So I think we have to look at the extremes. When you get into recovery from high function codependency, which means get my book, join my community, do all the things where I'm going to be walking you through how to get into recovery from high function codependency, you will learn that you can still be the helpful, loving person that you are without controlling the outcomes for other people, right? So if someone has a lot on their plate and you love them and you have time and you would like to help them, Instead of just jumping in and fixing, right, because those are the words you actually used, 
you're going to have a conversation. How can I best support you right now? I have time on Wednesday. Would it be helpful if I came and did your food shopping for you? Let's say someone who's sick or going through cancer, whatever, right? Like we'll come up with what what do they need help with? But where we make mistakes when we are actively HFCs is that we make assumptions about what we should be doing for people. We make assumptions about what people need. We make assumptions about how people should be living their lives according, you know, the world according to me, you know. And so people have all their own reasons and they have a right to succeed and fail, to do it amazing or to flail around. Like everyone has a right to their own journey and their own path. So again, I think that the answer to this is to not see it in the black and white, which is like, quote unquote, you literally wrote this, let them struggle and handle it themselves. N- no one's wanting the people that they love to struggle. I don't. That That's not what it is. It's who are we to let them or not let them if they're grown adults, first of all, right? Seeing as how we're not the boss of our friends. And what kind of support would actually feel supportive to the person? Because here's the thing with HFCs. We want to help. We are insta-advice giving and we are auto-helping because the other person's problem, their pain, is causing us so much discomfort that we just want it fixed so that we can go back to not feeling uncomfortable. Now, that may not feel very good to know, but it's the truth. And of course, we're lovers too. So yes, we're motivated by love as well. Okay. But when you really think about it, the compulsion, right, the compulsion, we have a deep drive to help. And that compulsion, if you can't not do it, if you're doing it automatically, that is actively being an HFC. And a compulsion is not the same as wanting to help because you don't have a choice when it's a compulsion. So I love the I love this question because you're slowing down. But I think that we have a lot of other choices between jumping in and fixing it and letting them struggle and handle it, handling it themselves. It's effective communication that you have to do in the middle. It seems like you're struggling. I have some time on Thursday. I would be happy to help. If you give me a list of things that I can buy for you at the store, I'm happy to go do it, right? And if they say, no, I'm good, it's respecting their rejection of help. That is being healthy, right? That's how we go from codependency to more interdependency, to healthier relationships, to more equitable relationships. That was a good question, though. Thank you. All right. Question in response to one of my Instagram posts. When we keep things to ourselves because we don't want people to worry, are we on their side of the street or ours? Well, when you have something going on for you and you could really use other people's support, but you make the master decision that you're not going to tell them because you don't want them to worry, you are robbing them of their right to want to give you support if it's a close relationship. I mean, I saw this in myself recently, and I, I, I did a, um, a podcast about it in a vlog and um, a YouTube video, where I had had a, a cancer scare. I had an abnormal um, mammogram on my right breast, and I had to go get a I had to go get a biopsy, and it was all scary as shit, and I had to wait like over a week for the uh, results. And I told a few select people, obviously my husband, my mother, my sisters, a couple of my my oldest pals. And then Vic said, and I have grown sons, you know, and he said, you're going to tell the kids. And I said, no. And and I don't actually think that's the wrong thing. But it, but it made me, how reticent I was to tell anybody, made me realize that my HFC tendencies run deep, which I know, and that it's a daily discipline and practice to not be actively high-functioning codependent. But in that case, I felt like I had the support I needed. And all of my sons are fathers themselves and have lives and careers. And I just thought there really might not be anything to tell. And thank God there wasn't. You know, it ended up being fine. But I wouldn't have felt better for them to know. So I think we have to be discerning about who we are protecting and who we're not, right? I don't have a right to protect Vic, my husband from how I'm really feeling, right? It's me withholding something important. Like if I didn't tell him that I had an abnormal mammogram, I don't think that that would be healthy for my marriage. That would be me being on his side of the street, being like, he can't handle it. I'm just going to handle it on my own. Not cool. Not cool. I told him immediately. He was completely supportive. 
And it helped me. He helped me carry the burden of my fear, right? Because we got to talk about it and talk about the odds. And 80% of the time when we do biopsies, they come out negative. And, you know, like, but I talked that through with him, which helped. So anyway, I, that was the longest way around the barn. I think I answered the question. Thank you for it. Oh, this is a great question. And a reason why a lot of HFCs don't want to share things that they're worried about. When you share something with someone about you, that you're concerned about or whatever, what if they make it all about them and that's more stressful? I struggle with this in regards to my husband's health challenges and my mother-in-law. How she responds to my kids, my husband, it feels like she doesn't consider how her comments affect them. And then I don't want to tell her anything, right? So she's overreacting. She's saying, well, I hope, you know, she's saying something inflammatory in front of children. In that respect, I first of all, your husband's health challenges and his mother, right? So part of it is that that that's between those two. And if you you can have a conversation with her about her response, if she's doing it in front of minor children, but I would more, this is really between your husband and his mother. And does it bother him that she's saying those things in front of the kids? And I think it's okay for you to say, hey, if you want to talk to your mother about this, can you please ask her not to say inflammatory things about your health in front of the children because it's scaring them, right? So I don't think that, I think that's okay in that respect. To, you gotta be, we have to be discerning about who we tell stuff to because this is not just your mother-in-law, trust me. This happens all the time. So that's why I don't choose people who make my pain about them, right? Those are not the people I'm confiding in. Because they're not emotionally trustworthy and they don't have the capacity to see you as a separate human being, right? They just see you as an, you know, what happens to you and how it impacts them, which is really painful when you're on the receiving end of that. So the answer to that question is be discerning about who you share what with. All right. Hey, Terry, I saw your presentation at Invest Her Conference and went up to the mic to ask a question, but I missed it as the session was wrapping up. I wanted to ask a question about our real estate clients who talk our ears off, LOL. How do you continue to work building the relationship but cut them off in a nice way without being rude? I see this a lot with older folks. Any help is appreciated and completely related to your presentation. Thank you in advance. Well, thank you for writing in after that amazing presentation. Yes, you guys, I love speaking, by the way. So if you have any corporate speakers, speaking gigs where you need a speaker. I have a whole go to terrycole.com and you can look at my speaking reel. Anyway, thank you for this, uh, Melanie. I appreciate you writing in. What you can do when someone is talking a lot is I would use the body language, which is kind, right? We use the one finger up where we say, oh, wait, can you hold up one sec? Um, I just wanted to, and then try to bring it back to, if it's someone that you're trying to, this was a real estate conference. So, you know, there's clients that you're trying to sell something to or you're trying to talk to about actual data and they're telling you stories from 1905, which is fine to build a rapport. But if they keep doing it, I think it's okay to say, oh, put your finger up, just one finger, not a whole hand because the whole hand can feel ag aggressive. Excuse me, Bob, one sec. I just wanted to quickly bring this back to, if I may, the what we were talking about with the listing price. Can we, I, I just want to make sure that I have that I have your input on that, like that. Again, we can always say, oh, I'm sorry, Bob, I'm, wait, I'm, I, I need to stop you there because actually I'm running late and I have to run out because I have another showing in 11 minutes. Again, we can apologize. I like using body language in a non-threatening way to help support what I'm saying. So I th hopefully that will be helpful. I appreciate you writing in. All right, you guys, I think that we got to it. I think we got to it. I think we did it. So I don't know. Did you like this Q&A style? Because it gives me stuff to also sort of riff on, which I like. But I have a super important announcement that I'm super excited to tell you. Oh, my God. The Terry Cole All Access Membership. Woo! You guys, finally, a membership that we absolutely love. So this includes all of my courses. This includes weekly calls. So if you like this Q&A style, if you like my style of answering questions, that's what it's about. So why, why would I include all my courses and weekly calls, including hot seat coaching and group coaching and all of that? Because this is my dharma in life. 
right, is to make mental health and self-help accessible, not just to some people, to all as many people as possible, right? It, it has always been my um, driving desire, my greatest desire to reach and help as many people as possible. And I know this membership is going to do that. I want to meet you where you are. So I have people coming in from so many areas. So it's an amazingly varied group of folks. I have 600 podcast episodes. I have 650 YouTube videos. I've got the boundary quiz. I've got hundreds of podcast interviews with other people and more. So I'm collecting people from all over the globe. And we we have these great moments. But to create the, the actual community, I want more consistent time with you. And I'm not just a one subject person, as you know. Yes, I talk about boundaries. Yes, I talk about codependency. Yes, I talk about intimacy. Yes, I talk about menopause. Yes, I talk about health. Yes, I talk about relationships, communication. I could keep going. I won't. You understand what I'm saying. I talk about all of these things. So if you want boundaries and you join the membership, it's here for you. If you want love and relationships, you can start there. I have my Real Love Revolution course. If you want to work on your father wound or your mother wound, I've got you because those courses are all included in this membership. And by bundling all of this together, I can focus on just this one thing rather than launching one program every couple of months, which is just exhausting because this gives me the bandwidth to serve you, my community, better than I can. I'm exhausted from launching. I just am ready to spend more time teaching, less time launching. That is really why we're doing the membership this way. And I want to create the most amazing, supportive, healing community. And I know that that is my special skill. Creating a sacred space for people to transform is my special skill. So when I was interviewing the incredible Dr. Sarah Gottfried in this up, an upcoming episode of The Terry Cole Show, we had this powerful conversation about the importance of community and how deeply it impacts our physiological well-being as well as our psychological well-being, right? We just talked about in this fast-paced world, creating meaningful connections and supportive spaces is more crucial than ever for personal growth and for healing. It was such an inspiring discussion. And it just reminded me of why I'm so incredibly passionate about building this community where we can support each other on this journey of breaking free from high-functioning codependency and anything else that is dimming your light. You can bring it all. So in order to make this as accessible as possible, I'm offering this incredible bundle at an amazing price point. So you're getting access to Real Love Revolution, which is thirteen hundred bucks, Boundary Bootcamp, which is nine ninety seven, Father Wound, which is nine ninety seven, Mother Wound, which is four ninety seven. All of that, plus weekly community Q and A sessions that alternate and include Q and A. I'm also going to do coaching. We're going to do individual hot seats. We're going to do workshops. I'll have guest speakers, but we will be in community and communion every single week. These calls take place on Zoom. And the Q&A coaching will take place in real time. I'll be answering all of your questions in the chat, and I'll be doing individual hot seats on screen for everyone to benefit from. And because I know you guys love scripts, I'll also be giving out new boundary and communication scripts every single week. So the monthly membership, it's $59 a month. The quarterly membership, is four payments of one fifty nine, and the yearly membership, which is the best value, is one payment of five ninety. You just have to go to terrycole dot com forward slash tcm right Terry Cole membership to sign up today. Terrycole dot com forward slash tcm. Go check it out. But you guys, I am so pumped to be able to hang out with you every single week. Fifty nine dollars a month. Trust me, you are spending more money in Starbucks right now than you will to be in community with me every single week. And I'm super pumped. This is like my dream come true. So please, if you like this style, if you like the Q&A, if you like the being together, join, right? What do you have to lose? 59 bucks, come. I can't wait to see you there. So I hope that you like this Q&A and I hope that you guys have the most amazing week joining my community. And as always, take care of you.